Uh, hello everyone. Just cruising by this motorcycle dealership. Well, for some reason they're closed on Mondays in my state. Don't know why. But that's one of the two days they always have these uh, MSF classes. What's going on here? This is exactly where I took mine a year and a half ago. But uh, I was wanting to throw out a couple of pointers. Here I am a year and a half later. Um, a couple of things they, t or a few things they teach in the class that I want to kind of relate to real world experience based on my little experience. Uh, gotta get the money shot of the R6. As you can see, I don't know if you uh, mentioned this in another video, it was originally all black. But I've been buying the used fairing pieces to get it to the red. Still having trouble finding some good used ones for the headlight, as well as an upper tail. The way they make the tail is it's kind of a lower piece than the upper piece. I can at least get the upper piece. But anyhow, back to the subject at hand. Uh, I remember one thing they briefly said in the class was if you lock up, uh, you know, you give too much brake to your rear that you lock up the wheel and start to skid. You know, they just briefly covered this in class for like, you know, 10 seconds. They just said, you know, if you lock up your rear wheel, skid, hold it. Do not release it. Because that way you want to keep your... Because if you're locking up, your front wheel is going different than your rear. And if your rear suddenly gets power, you're going to flip over or something. Well, a few months after I took my class, uh, I was riding my Ninja 250. And some guy really pretty badly cut me off. I was doing about 35, 40. So I panic brake and my rear tire locked up and I just immediately, it's like time froze and I just remember the instructor saying, hold it, do not let go of the rear. And so I held it and I skid and good thing because I kind of went at a good, uh, my tail went to the right and I skidded. Scared the shit out of the car behind me. But uh, I didn't crash just because of one little thing mentioned in the MSF class. And I really kind of wish they would uh, emphasize a little more how to avoid nazis. So that's kind of the one thing. And I'm going to go ahead and take off. I am so freaking thirsty right now. Alright. Okay. okay, so another thing... Um, They really didn't uh, teach in the class, but when I learned when I was in the uh, couple of uh, quite a few years ago, I was taking a commercial driver's license class, you know, for the big 18-wheeler trucks. And speaking of 18-wheelers, that guy's probably blocking me, but I'm gonna go ahead. I was waiting for a car like that. That's why I didn't want to go, because some car like that black one was just going to go around that truck, and uh, even though that 18-wheeler turning was blocking traffic in this lane, so it was wide open, I didn't know which vehicle from that lane was going to jump in front, so that's why I was a little, very cautious on that one. Good thing, because that black car did what I was expecting somebody to do. So, okay, so anyhow, I'm taking a commercial driver's license class in an 18-wheeler. And one thing I remember the instructor said that really stood out was, uh, he quite simply called it control your space. For example, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm controlling the space in front of me by stopping early. See this whole space in front of me, about two car lengths, I'm controlling. I can't control what they're doing over there, how close they get on each other. I can't control people on my right. I can't control the person behind me. But I the I can control the space in front of me. And especially on these smaller motorcycles, you know, as we all know, you know, cars just don't see us and we're apt to get uh, rear-ended pretty easily when sitting at a red light. So that was one thing that really uh, emphasized and, uh, you know, 
kept instructing on us in the commercial driver's license was control, control your space. But they really didn't talk about that in the uh, motorcycle class. They just said, you know, when you're at a light or a stop sign, you know, leave a, you know, extra space in front of you, which is us trying to say, you know, they need to emphasize that more. So, so that's what I'm doing. Just kind of the extra stuff beyond MSF. Just uh, kind of help the new people out, or maybe get some uh, veterans out there out of some bad habits. Okay, so that's control your space, so if your rear brake locks up in your skid, hold it. And maybe even, uh, like one thing I did after I got my uh, endorsement in my bike, you know, to get a feel for it, for all the maneuvers that we did in the MSF class, was to, uh, see I didn't downshift all the way to first in time on that one. Coasted in third gear on that, so. No biggie. Yeah, that's another thing they taught in the class. They're saying, you know, when you're approaching a red light or so on, just keep downshifting until you stop. Then you know, boom, you're in first gear and you're ready to go when it's a green light or your turn at the light. So I kind of like that one. Yeah. Oh. Nice Camaro. I'm really glad they brought those back. The old style. I had a chance to test drive them. I have to say, I'm impressed. I like it. I uh, test drove a V6 model. That's pretty cool. Okay, so let's see. What else was uh, some other stuff I'm thinking of? Okay, yeah, one big thing. And this doesn't have to do with uh, motorcycle driving, but everybody driving in general. Is I will say about 99.9999% of the people out there driving, you know, all everybody around me, people only pay attention to what's right in front of their nose. If it isn't more than 10 yards or 20 yards in front of their nose, they're just not paying attention. And since since we're on motorcycles, and you know, it's easier for us to get hurt if a car hits us. We need to be more defense, better defensive drivers than what you normally are. And one tip I want to give out, and this doesn't have to do with motorcycles, it has to do with just driving in general, is, let's see, let's watch this bitch. She's not even looking at me. See, she's just worried about what was right in front of her. And at least she took her time coming over and just didn't jump right on me. So, But still, I had to be defensive. Um, so yeah, so most people just pay attention to what's just in front of them. And what I'm saying is, whether you're on your motorcycle or in your daily driver, your car, or truck, or whatever, just in general driving, is, uh, you almost need to be a chess player. You know how they say the expert chess players, uh, they're always planning, you know, 12, 13, 14 moves ahead of time based upon what their opponent's most recent move is, you really need to plan ahead, look ahead. It's even right then, I'm glancing at the green light a quarter mile down the road. I'm not just worried about what's going on in front of me right here, it's, you know, I'm checking surroundings, cautious on the braking clutch, make sure everybody's stopped. You just, yeah, you just need to look ahead. And one thing I notice I do a lot in my cars, it's not really as noticeable in a motorcycle, because with the motorcycle you can, you know, you're so small, you can, you know, jump around and maneuver all around your lanes. But in a car, let's say we're on a freeway and I'm in this left lane. I'll go ahead and show you. Okay, so I'm in this left lane and there's a bunch of traffic in front of us and I got a big pickup in front of me blocking my view. Well, if we're doing about, you know, even freeway speeds and it's, you know, heavy traffic and I got this big thing in front of me, even in a car, I'll get over, you know, stick my left tires on the shoulder to see what the fuck's in front of them. You know, I don't care what the damn truck in front of me is doing. I want to know what the fucking 10 cars in front of him are doing. So if they're going to, you know, oop, heavy traffic turned into a traffic jam, we all got to hit the brakes. I know we're stopping, you know, an emergency or quick stop 
before I see the uh, brake lights of the truck blocking my view. So that's another thing, you know, it's, don't hesitate to, you know, peek around something. It's easier to do it on the left side because, you know, I don't know about you crazy people in the United Kingdom, when you got your uh, driver's steering wheel on the wrong side, you'll have to uh, look on the right side. <laughs> So that's, okay, so I'm trying to, trying to do this with mental notes, which is a challenge in the first place. So yeah, that's just a few tips I want to get out. Um, pay attention to MSF class. See, like this white car wasn't paying attention to the construction going on in front of him. So he's less than 10 feet from hitting a freaking cone. It's like, look, you know, geez, people, there's more to the world driving your car than what's 10 feet in front of you. Look ahead. And I think I am. I'm going to check out this neighborhood. Okay. So I guess that's about all on that. Hey, baby. Nothing like a little old lady and a blonde lady driving a Mercedes. Oh, yeah, she's got money. Lock on. Oh yeah, and another thing, uh, for example, like school zones, if there was a bunch of cars parallel parked here, and you're in a school zone or someplace where there's a lot of pedestrian activity, slow it down. Now I remember, um, right when I got my driver's license at 16, I'm leaving school one day, and I'm going past all the parallel parked cars, and I just thought, you know, if one of my idiot you know, people from school comes running out, you know, because fucking kids aren't paying attention. I said, if one of them jumps out, I'm going to freaking hit them. So I kind of, you know, even though I was going the speed limit, I just thought, you know what, just be more careful. I had my foot hovering over the brake. Just, and, you know, just anticipating a, a, another kid jumping out, you know, from the parallel parked cars. And sure enough, out jumps Marla Duncan. Oh, she was hotter than shit. I'd love to have dated her and ask her out, but, you know, running her over would not have been a good way to do it. So if I hadn't had that in my head ahead of time, you know, you know what, just somebody might jump out. I might want to, you know, get the foot on the brake and get ready to do an emergency stop. And sure enough, not three fucking seconds later, boom. I wonder if I hit her how different my life would have been. She might have been my wife by now. Oh, well. Lucky thing I didn't hit her. Yeah. Because by now she would have divorced me. I had child support, alimony, yeah, all that. So. Okay, so I think that's all for my extra safety tips. Just wanted to show some extra stuff out there. And uh, later, and have fun riding.